Hey, what's going on, everybody? Tom Kelly here from Clean Cut Audio. Today, we have a very exciting topic, again, on loudness. Arguably one of the most important topics when it comes to audio for podcasting. Today, we're going to be talking about peak limiting brick wall limiters and how loud is too loud. All right, let's do it. This concept of peak limiting is a topic within a topic within a topic within a dream within a topic. There's a lot of stuff that kind of builds on this. So I will link in the description of other videos you could watch to help you understand some of this. But peak limiting is basically just saying nothing, even for the tiniest microsecond, is allowed to be louder than X, whatever target we set. And Apple has its standards, as does the Audio Engineering Society, as does many other organizations that say how loud is too loud. We often talk about negative 16 loves for stereo, negative 19 loves for mono, but that is an integrated loudness. If you've seen my other videos on vocal rider and compressors, you know that there is a loudness range that is also incorporated into that and arguably more important, I'd say inarguably more important. But on top of all of that, still, we have the true peak. And that is, again, the smallest microsecond of time. What is the absolute amplitude of this voltage in our podcast? Apple has its standards. We strongly recommend that the audio signals are preconditioned in such a way that the overall loudness remains around negative 16 luffs with a plus or minus one decibel tolerance and that the true peak value doesn't exceed negative one decibels full scale. We're going to be talking about what that means today and how to make sure you don't go against Apple's and again, many other organizations loudness standards. It's really easy and we need to introduce you to the term limiting today. I've got many, many videos on compression, loudness range, dynamic range. And if you've seen any of them, you know that the job of a compressor is to not allow too much of a signal to pass through so that things get too loud. It lowers the loudness range so that the highest highs and the lowest lows are closer together. A limiter is very similar, but it has just a couple different parameters that makes it function entirely differently. We know that in a compressor, we can adjust the attack time, the release time, the threshold, the ratio, all of those important factors. And a limiter is only different than a compressor in really two ways. It has an insanely fast attack and it has a very high ratio. A lot of people will say that a limiter starts at about a 10 to one ratio and it goes up to infinity to one, which we call a brick wall limiter meaning nothing is getting through. We can think of this as uh, a kind of a lenient bouncer at the club, right? So a compressor, uh, there's four people wanting to get in. Oh, hey, wait, guys, we're kind of at capacity. I'll let one in when we have a little bit more come out. You know, you can wait your turn. You can come in. A brick wall limiter is clotheslining everyone at the door. No one's getting in this club, not for any reason. It is never passing this threshold that we set. Brick wall limiting is what we're going to be doing. If you were in Adobe Audition and you were using the match loudness feature, which is pretty good. I don't really like it that much. I think it brings up too much noise, whereas my workflow in Pro Tools with Vocal Rider in two stages of compression and all of that kind of stuff, I think it deals better with allowing what is signal to be signal and what is noise to be noise, not trying to make one the other. But if you were in Audition, you can set your true peak to negative one decibel full scale, or sometimes it's uh, true peak, negative one, you're good to go. That is a brick wall limiter. That's all you have to do to make sure you are compliant with Apple's standards. But for those of us not in Audition that have to do it the manual way, there's a really easy way to do this. The first thing, we don't want to be clipping on the recording end. So in my podcast here, we'll look into Pro Tools. We recently did an episode on Cute Without the E by Taking Back Sunday, one of my favorite songs off of Tell All Your Friends from the year 2002. And I just laugh a lot in the podcast, so I make sure to keep my gain down so that at my loudest, my highest highs, I'm not clipping, so you don't want to clip on the way in. But 
If you've seen my other videos on loudness and compression, you know that we're doing quite a bit of work within our DAWs to bring that signal up even further, usually sometimes two or three times louder than the recording. We have a potential to clip if we're not being careful in the mixing process as well. So we need to be sure to be gain staging properly while recording and while mixing. So this is a mixing process. What we're going to look at right here is this laugh. Now, it didn't clip on the recording end. We can see that there's no... Uh, maybe it did a little bit. We can see it kind of trimmed off. It's a little squared off at the bottom there. But it's not really bad. It's not really audible. However, if we get rid of all my limiters in the recording, let's take a listen. We can hear... Let's bring up my WLM meter to show that uh, this is a pretty animated part, so it's going to be louder than negative 16 luffs. But we'll listen. We'll see that the integrated loudness is about right, but the those really high highs are getting too high. Q without the E in parentheses, I stay wrecked. In parentheses. <laughs> All right, so if we're just looking at the WLM meter, it doesn't look that bad. You know, negative 14.2 luffs, that's a little high, but it was a laugh, it should be louder. So luffs is a very long-term averaging, and that's not what we're looking at. I'm going to open my Dura meter here. So we're going to see two things here when we're looking at this meter. We're going to see a line bouncing around 16 and 14, and that's going to be the long-term average, and the RMS is kind of how our ears hear comprehend understand sound it's not this instantaneous reading of amplitude it's kind of uh it's kind of an averaging and then we have the true peak which is going to be one little light kind of flashing up here let's just take a look q without the e in parentheses i stay wrecked in parentheses. <laughs> So we see the, the average loudness is in the target where we want, but we have a true peak, that instantaneous amplitude that's clipping, and we don't want that at all. So what we do, we load up a brick wall limiter. Uh, I'm just going to go to the master fader and open my L2. And this is, again, a brick wall limiter. My out ceiling is set to negative two decibels, uh, true peak, or full scale. So... <sighs> The standard is negative one, but here's the thing. In MP3 file conversion, there's noise introduced. Uh, Bluetooth headphones, there's noise introduced through the transmission of that signal. And that's going to be noise on top of our already mastered and exported podcast. So if we're mastering it to negative one decibels full scale with that true peak of negative one, we might actually be clipping once it's gone through the file conversion, streaming all that other noise. So I played a little conservative. I give it an extra decibel of ceiling there to make sure that at all times we are two decibels away from clipping, which is great. That's fine. So let's take a look at this now that I have my limiter up here it's saying nothing can come beyond negative two decibels and if we look at this duro meter here again by waves if you're interested in these plugins there's a 10 percent discount code in the description of this video but we're going to see that those instantaneous readings are never going to they're never going to clip which is right here in that little uh zero that's clipping and uh we're going to see it just getting up to negative two decibels nothing is going to go beyond so let's listen to that again Q without the E in parentheses, I stay wrecked. In parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there are other things to do with gain staging and there are other opportunities for your signal to clip but with all of this processing i'm doing i'm adding decibels everywhere uh, i've got vocal rider two compressors um my fader is up three decibels here going into this routing folder up another three decibels in order to get it to that negative 16 luffs and in order to get a healthy and rather small loudness range but we also need to make sure we're not clipping and that we are fitting into those Apple loudness standards of no greater than negative one decibels full scale to make sure that our listeners aren't getting crackles and distortions in our podcast. So when we're talking about loudness, there's so much to talk about. It's not just negative 16 luffs. It's not just loudness range. It's also that true peak. And this is a pretty easy topic, though. All I have to do is uh, let's load up this L2, you know, just for the first time here. Dynamics, because it's a Dynamics processor, L2. All I really have to do is set that out ceiling 
to negative two and we're compliant, right? Um, what I like to do to keep it in unity is click this button here to bring down the threshold and the out ceiling so that they're both at negative two. So it's not making anything louder or quieter. If the threshold matches the out ceiling, we will hear the effects of that processor running, but we're not going to get this deviation in loudness, whether it is on or off. So all this limiter is doing, it's not compressing the signal. It's only catching those very high peaks. So let's, let's actually look at an example here. I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate this track twice. We're going to look at the raw waveform. We're going to look at with brick wall limiting and without. So give me a second to set up this routing here. All right, and my dog is walking in the room. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, there he is. Look at that good boy. Oh my gosh, his name is Levi. Anyways, <laughs> so we have here, this is the raw waveform. This is without brick wall limiting, and this is with brick wall limiting. So we can see that, you know, these signals are pretty similar, and uh, we're just making sure that these big loud laughs don't clip. That's the only difference. It's not affecting the rest of the signal, just trimming off the very, very top end of that. And the last thing that we're going to talk about is why you shouldn't normalize to achieve this true peak value. So let's just say, well, it's accurate. This signal here is clipping. All right. But all of this is perfectly negative 16 luffs. Here's what happens when we normalize, which I've never done in podcasting. Everyone's like, you have to do it. You don't have to do it. I don't think it really does anything. So let's normalize this. And we're going to set the peak value to negative two decibels. Now, this is going to make our true peak levels compliant with Apple's loudness standards. But here is what's going to happen. If we hit render, that entire signal just got quieter. You can see that, right? Let me copy this down here so we can see a comparison of the two. Let's make them the same size so we can compare apples to apples here. And we're going to normalize this to negative two decibels. Now, see, the problem is now this peak is at negative two, but the rest of the entire episode is now going to be at negative 14 luffs. And that is the issue, everything here is quieter. We can see across the entire waveform, everything is now two decibels quieter. We didn't want the whole episode two decibels quieter. We only wanted the peaks. So the value of brick wall limiting over normalizing is that it's only affecting the parts that need to be affected. A limiter, especially with the threshold set so high and the output set to negative two, it's not touching the rest of your signal, only the things that would clip it's keeping from clipping. So I encourage you all to dig into your signal chain, check out what your integrated loudness is in LUFS, your loudness range, and also your true peak. That is probably the easiest one to get right. So make sure you are focusing on that. If you were in Adobe Audition or Audacity or any, really any DAW, there will be a plugin or an audio suite or an effect or whatever that is called either limiter or brick wall limiter. The difference is brick wall is an infinity to one ratio. Nothing will ever get beyond this. A limiter can have a 10 to one ratio. So maybe something can get beyond negative one, negative two decibels full scale. We want brick wall to make sure nothing will ever go by it. There's so many things to talk about with loudness for podcasting. It is the number one reason people will stop listening to your show if the complaints are audio quality based, the loudness is all over the place. We need this loudness dialed in. We need it set. We need it right. We need it to not deviate too much, too loud, too quiet, too loud, too quiet. We want one easy thing to listen to. Never too loud, never too quiet, not even for a microsecond. We just crossed 400 subscribers at the time of recording this video. Thank you all. If you are not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a, a video. 
every Tuesday. These are coming out. If you want to take this relationship to the next level, I also have a Patreon. You can find it at patreon.com slash clean cut audio. I thanked my supporters earlier for everything that you're doing for me. I really appreciate it. It really makes this channel possible. It takes a lot of time so much time. So thank you all. If you'd like to support, I really can't thank you enough, but either way, just you being here is amazing. Last thing, make sure you're checking out my podcast. Tons of supplementary, but very different content there as well. Cleancutaudio.com slash podcast. I don't want to belabor this outro. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.